Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new series here on the Pink Orangutan YouTube channel. It's called our uh, four-player review, where uh, I, myself, Nasty Man, and uh, Benjamin Arthur... Hey, guys. Timo. Hey. And Scary Uncle Devin. Wow. What happens is the four of us will get together and we'll play a game. Not necessarily a multiplayer game, but the point is is that all four of us will play it and we'll sit down and we'll re we'll play it for a few hours and then we'll sit down and review it to uh, kind of give give multiple perspectives on the game, you know, make that way you've got multiple people with different likes and dislikes of the game so that way we can kind of come to a more cohesive hopefully help people out come to a more cohesive conclusion on whether or not you might like the game or not so to start off with we are doing forced which is a game that came out on steam uh not too long ago it was before the winter sale it was anyway early december we'll put i'll put links to the uh the developers pages in the uh description i actually got to play this game at pax uh i don't think i don't know if devin ever got. I don't know I if you ever know. got around to it. Yeah, it was in the it was in the indie mega booth at PAX. Yeah, there was way too many people there. There was so many people. I kind of <laughs> had a little um, panic attack and was like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So so I got to play this at PAX Prime, and uh, I was fairly impressed with it at PAX Prime. So I, again, I came on the winter sale, and uh, Devin picked up some copies. So uh, so we tried it out, and now we're going to give our review of it. And to start with, uh, we're going to talk about the options menu here. It has a little. This is actually I was kind of surprised by. This actually has a news section to the option menu. I was I didn't figure that this game would need like a news section to it, but no. maybe they plan on doing a bunch of updates. There's the you know, the ability to select co-op play or single player play. Co-op play, you actually start local games and internet games in the same section, which was a little confusing at first, but, but I think Devin and Timo noticed it before I did. I was confused. Yeah. Uh, single player, there are campaigns, and I'm not sure what survival is. I haven't done it. I think you just fight against a bunch of waves of guys for as long as you can. You know, sort of just a test challenge mode. There's there's a lot of leaderboards for this game. You'll see when we actually get into the game footage. Uh, you're timed on all of your levels. There's challenges <laughs> to meet and everything like that, so... This game is definite, very leaderboard friendly. And then uh, then the settings area, they've got, uh, this is, I love when games do this. They have a master slider, a sound effects slider, and a music slider. Yeah. I love when games do that. Yep. Like, I've always... Sometimes it's mixed and you just, it's you're not quite feeling it. Yeah. You need, you know, you need to have either less music or... Well, and even, you know. even some games, a lot of games to, these days do a separate sound effects and music slider, but not everybody has that master slider, which is right. nice, because it's like, oh, I want to keep the mix I have, but I want everything to be a little bit quieter, and so that way I can just adjust the master slider. Yeah. So I'm really glad they have that. Uh, full screen, uh, on or off, subtitles on or off, uh, resolution. The resolution options are pretty good. There's quite a bit. One thing I do like is they actually have adjustments for for different... I'm assuming that's what this is. It, I could be wrong because it doesn't actually label it, but the third number I'm assuming is the hertz of your yeah, monitor it should be the refresh yeah. display yeah. refresh rate, which is actually very nice because my TV... It, it, it's nice, it, but it's, it's a few years old now, and it's actually... It was back when TVs were actually 59 hertz, yeah. not 60, and my, my TV, which I use as a monitor, which is what we played on, it's a 59 hertz, so... It's nice that they have the option for me to change it from 60 hertz to 59 hertz, because on 60 hertz things do kind of look a little fuzzy for some reason. It's, that it's one cycle that per one second. Hertz. Yeah, that one of, hertz is off. out of 60. It doesn't make it look ugly, but <laughs> it it definitely looks. Off. It's noticeable. It looks a little different. Um, it just has one selection for graphics quality. It might it'd be nice if you could change this a little around a little better, but. You know what? This might be a Unity game because if this is in the Unity engine, that's kind of what Unity's thing is. Is a lot of games just stick to a couple of preset graphic options for Unity, and that's what they do. Language selections. There's quite a few languages. Uh, a lot of a lot of European languages. So it's if you're, pretty standard. If you're, you know, want some German or Italian or some Dutch, por Portuguese. I feel like they should get Portuguese, English right nice. first, uh, and then we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, V-Sync, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the nice thing is the keyboard, you can fully rebind the keyboard keys. And actually, But it is kind of weird because when you go into the... I'll demonstrate it here. When you go into the keyboard and controller setups, this may actually black the recording because um, it did it to me earlier. It, like, loads up another screen. Oh, it didn't do it this time. 
Okay. Uh, I've had this happen where it loads up this screen, and it actually, like, resets my controller options and stuff like that. Uh, this is just uh, um, registering. For the controller, unfortunately, you can't really rebind a lot of stuff. Um, it just lets you register all the buttons. Well, you know, you can fully rebind uh, everything, so uh, you can press so it registers all that stuff, whatever. Um, okay, confirm. We'll get back out here. So that's the option menu. It's pretty basic. See, see how the resolution reset here? Yeah. I'll show up. everybody here will notice. That. I don't know if you guys will see it on the recording. And you see how it's kind of different looking now? Yeah. Because yeah. now it's on 60 hertz. Huh. So you notice how it looks different? That's why. Is it's on 60 hertz now. It's now applied the 60 hertz resolution. So, and if I change it back, confirm, that brings it back to looking like it did. Hmm. So yeah, that, that one hertz can actually make a visible difference, so it's very nice that they actually yeah. included that. Uh, so, uh, and from here, we'll kick to, we played it earlier, so we have the recorded footage, and we'll kick to the recorded footage. And we'll start actually tackling into the actual game itself. What we're going to start off with first, uh, with this game, we're going to kind of go in the, I think can be a reasonably acceptable order that I think you guys will agree with is kind of least important to most important as far as the three main aspects of a game that that uh, we're going to do here is uh, presentation, story, and then finally we'll end with gameplay. So we'll start we'll start with presentation, and I think for that I'll throw it to Ben first, because I know Ben I think has some, well maybe not about the presentation. Well, <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I, I think um, I think it's more the story aspect. That yeah, that's that's, 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 that's <laughs> the more which, that which more legitimately we all may have some words for but, the story um, aspect. In terms of uh, the presentation, the game uh, it looks very clean. The menus are they from what we saw, it looks like they're organized in such a way that they're uh, they're very usable. It's not something the where there's a lot very, of very usable options uh, that you want organized. that are going to be hidden somewhere where you're not expecting. Yeah, you don't have to dig um, through. Because it, it, it doesn't have quite as many options, it seems like, for settings. But at the same time, that also saves you from all the time spent. What the hell does this option do? You know, because uh, let's, yeah. let's be honest. A lot of people, you know, they, they may be PC gamers and be big into it and everything. But not everybody knows what every single option does. Yeah. You know, and, unless, unless know you're in... One hertz of difference on your monitor refresh rate can make yeah, a big well, difference in how it looks. And <laughs> not, not everybody's in the business. Not everybody knows what, you know, what different degrees of anti-aliasing are going to do to your your uh, resulting image quality. And not everybody knows what, you know, different bloom levels or lighting effects that you can, in some instances, specifically change are going to do in terms of performance versus appearance. And this kind of does away with that, where it's like, look, do you want it to look good, or do you want it to run faster? And we'll kind of take it from there, selecting what it takes to, you know, make those uh, overall goals um, come through. And it seems like it does a good job of that. We look at that yeah. briefly. I think overall, the uh, art design is... It's strong, but it doesn't uh, really stand out in any singular way. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, have any feature of it that I would say looks... You know, absolutely unique to this game, which is good and bad. I mean, if, if you're if you're good with a lot of uh, what's going on in dungeon crawlers, then you won't be disappointed. But if you're looking for uh, some you know new art angle, then it's you know, just not going to deliver that. Um, yeah. The uh, sound was uh, was good. It didn't have any problems with uh, the sound cutting in or out or doing weird things that weren't really expected. Just over overall, in terms of um, the production, I would say that uh, it's it's very solid, and um, you're not going to get anything real unexpected, either good or bad. Uh, Devin Timo, any uh, comments about the presentation you want to uh, you would like to share as well? I'd say it's you know. Average to above average. There wasn't anything wrong with it, like Ben was saying, but there wasn't anything that blew me away either. Yeah. So, I, I think I think definitely for me the yeah I mean the art style, I'd say it was good. Uh, the art style and the the graphic style and the they, I think they did a good job kind of keeping things feeling like it has a very gladiator you know roman gladiator roman mythology type feel i think they did a good job kind of keeping that all 
coherent. Like it, yeah, it, it, had, it had a theme that made sense. Um, and but they yeah, stuck to it. but uh, but yeah, I mean, while it was while it was good and it was very coherent and that's and that's very nice and they kept their theme very well. Yeah, it, I wouldn't necessarily like if I had to label it as like oh like no, this isn't a game that I feel like oh the visuals are awesome and you really have to look at them and things like that. I, it, they they're good. They're very decent. They're very competent and uh, and it didn't seem like there were many graphical glitches, which was nice. Yeah, that's true. Um, I didn't see any tearing. Or anything except uh, it, it, that we ran into a few occasional and the actual game glitches. Um, yeah, I'd say it's, yeah, it's, it's probably more likely, so much but, as they were but, just, but, know, but as far as visual glitches or... or audio glitches, there didn't really seem to be any of those. So well, my my player uh, character disappeared a few times, but I, I suspect yeah. that that's probably more of a game engine issue than yeah. just a display or drawing issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was easily fixed just by loading a different area and coming back. It, it was yeah. not, you know... Unfortunately, you couldn't load the level you yeah, were Yeah, to no, we had a, we did have the to explain the issue we we uh there were times when at the end of a level if you fail the level you have the option to retry the level to go back to kind of the level the hub skills that area. you'll see uh the level hub where you could either choose a different level or go back to the same level or there's an option to reselect your skills which sets you back out to the skill select screen which we'll cover when we get the gameplay and what was happening is we would go back there, and uh, Benjamin Arthur's character wouldn't load. He could still access all access all of his menus, but his character model wouldn't actually load. So we couldn't go back to the level because in order to go back to the level from the weapon select area, everybody needs to stand on a platform. All the active players, and since he right. was still registered as active, but he wasn't actually on the map, we couldn't go on right, and re because, just go back to redoing the level. We had right. to go back I wasn't to the there, hub. Yeah, I wasn't there to the interact level. with the plate, and so it wouldn't do it, which is what tells me that I, I think it was um, an engine issue as opposed to just yeah. a drawing issue. Because if for some reason it just wasn't drawing me, I should still have been able to interact yeah, with things. Yeah. But since I you couldn't do that either, I, sus right, I, sh I, I suspect that because I couldn't interact with things, that uh, that it wasn't just a drawing issue, but that's uh, starting starting to drift away from the art. But, yeah, I was Devin, gonna say yeah, um, something here. Um, looks um, like the the art style kind of reminded me of like a newer version of maybe like Gauntlet. Yeah, no, it, it has it, this very I a, think a cartoony probably, Gauntlet. I think that probably has a lot to do with the kind of but then again it is a couch co op nature of it. Right. Yeah. I mean it, the game itself. I mean with the different with the, the you know the the different hubs for the the different levels within each world yeah. has a very gauntlet-y theme, especially the, like, right. Dark Legacy. Well, and I would say that would be more of a gameplay kind of thing, but, I mean, even art style, it kind of reminded me of Gauntlet, you know. It yeah. wasn't yeah. wasn't highly detailed kind of thing, but then there were spots where they, they kind of... Um, it's kind of a weird term where they juice things up, where they, you you see things that you know... It's a really minor detail, but, like, when we were... When, when we when we summoned the... Um, Soul, whatever its name was. Yeah, I kept the calling it Alfred. I don't know. I don't know what his <laughs> name was. Guy. I think it's like you know, Balkus. Balkus. Yeah, whatever. I'm Apparently, he was I'm just that with, memorable. Yeah, I'm sticking with Ulfric here. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that again in the story. But yeah. when you would summon him, <laughs> yeah. he would send off particles that were of the color of the person who summoned him. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, it's just a little minor detail like that, you know, and little we would, tiny effects. And we would spam the summon. We so spam the crew. You can see of us, and it would be sparky. We'll show that part right now so you can see what we're talking about. right now so that shows up. You know, it looks like he looks like a firework Editing magic. going off. <laughs> he looks like a firework going off with yeah. all of our four different colors. So it's it's nice to see like the little the really little touches even in the overall, you know, in the grand scheme yeah. of okay, well it's not the most thing that somebody's gonna be focusing on, but it's still nice that they did it. Yeah. Uh, you know? the little touches are still very important. Like in you know, in my in in my own personal tastes and preferences, I'm much more of a fan if you're willing to put in the little touches than if you're, you know, putting that same amount of time into getting five extra polygons in your models or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. it's the little Look, his nose looks perfect now. Touches, <laughs> those really get yeah. me. Like, those are what re I really love to see in graphic, in, in character, in, like, game graphics and game art styles. And so, yeah, the little things like that, that were pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, that was pretty that's, nice. uh, I'd say, yeah, I'd my say overall. the music was the music was decent, but again, it 
I don't uh, remember I any of it. it so. Yeah, and that's the thing. Is it, it you know, wasn't bad. It's not like we were playing it and we're like, oh, I, this music is terrible. I think we were yelling at each other too much to hear true, the music. That's true. Well, well I was and say, there's a lot of, we'll go over this and we get to it, but there's a lot of need to communicate uh, yeah. in this game. So, yeah, yeah, the music, I can't the imagine music playing was, this online bad. with you guys. Just oh, the God, delays. No, we'll, get to, we'll get to that at gameplay. There's some, but, uh, so yeah, I, I, I'd say that... Uh, Comparable, but maybe not memorable, is very descriptive yeah. of their presentation. It was adequately moderate. It, yeah, it yeah. did. It did everything that you needed which is, to do, which isn't bad to make the gameplay no so, happen. And yeah. I think that that seems like that was kind of their attitude. They they weren't very um, presentation driven, where it was all about being original with the art or very very. Um, this isn't an EA game. music okay. focused. <laughs> it was well, it, it was about you know about having the gameplay. Uh, be accessible through what they did yeah. in terms of their presentation, and, and I mean, and, you and can show everything looked good. Everything, you know, nothing seemed like it was, uh, you know, had bad drawing or anything. But it, uh, like I said, the the music and the you know the rest of the presentation just wasn't particularly memorable. Yeah, you know, we were like talking about the music. It's like that game had music. <laughs> You know, it, was, it didn't stand out effects. as being terrible or as yeah. being amazing. It, yeah. it was what there was, was one sound effect I remember is when we were all mashing the spirit button together, with all the sparkles <laughs> and. So now we'll move on to story. Uh, uh, I, I'll start with uh, I'll start with I'll start with Tymo. Uh, you go ahead and start. Uh, I get the feeling like he's going to share the sentiments <laughs> that we all have. Yeah, that just. Ben made a comment about get English right. I have <laughs> I have wonder if they wrote it in a different language and translated and it poorly. I, I want to I want to say that the developers we check on are where not the, um, on where they are. Language, English native language English speakers. Okay, uh, I'll check on that right now, kid. Because okay, well, we'll keep. keep okay, you you can keep going. Because it just the the way the dialogue feels, it, it's it doesn't come off as natural English. There was one part yeah. where the, your little spirit guide was describing one of the the bosses to you, and he said, he used to be like you. Now he's not. <laughs> that was, his, that was like, not part of a grander wow, thanks. Like, explanation of him and his character and how his character has progressed. That was like the description that you get of the character. And it, that kind of stuff just popped up everywhere. And I think he repeated that line in a slightly different way when yeah, we it was, it was similar, got to rephrased. that boss. And we were just kind of like, ah. And then there was the it gives you the the gauntlet style help. I always remember that from the the N sixty four gauntlet. The first help board is avoid dangerous objects. Yeah, <laughs> and it give, that Don't kind of take help damage. It, if yeah, you want to it survive. Gave, <laughs> yeah, it gave you those kind of pro tips at the beginning of the level. Okay, yeah, avoid the, damage. The uh, the the studio is from Denmark. So okay. That explains okay. it. Completely. Okay, their native so, yeah. language is not English. Sorry, There's guys. A group of small group of students you, it, who uh, who lived in a university in Copenhagen. So yeah, it, okay. Uh, the translation isn't terrible, but I it's mean, not horrible. It's, but it could use a little bit of rewriting to not be so flat. Well, yeah. here, well, and, and well, because uh, yeah, I think I'll... time was going to touch on the main point of the translation may not be the only thing that needs help there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. <laughs> It's not even just the translation. Whoever got they they got to do the English voices. They're not yeah. that good. The, not the that spirit amazing. guy was okay, and I guess that's fine because we hear him all the time. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't like Navi as much as we keep comparing him to Navi. Yeah, he, he was not terrible right in the game because visually he's he's like that. But no, they pretty much copy pasted that effect from Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty. Hey, it's pretty listen. standard fairy spirit sprite. No, soul. that was good. That was I'll hit you again. I, I think. Uh, is this uh, revenge for when I kept hitting you in the I think, eye on that? I think the trip? the most the biggest part of that is the uh, the writing is not very strong. No, but yeah. So, here's kind of my thought on that though. It's a dungeon crawler. The the the, the ma gauntlet didn't have a well, good story. It, it, every, it, well, it's one of those things where I mean, it, no, I was going to mention it when we got around. Pretend to, to have it. one. Yeah. No. And that and that was the thing is is this this game it felt to me like it um it, it didn't land on it was it said it spent too much time on the fence. It didn't land on, clearly on the side of this game is all about gameplay. Nobody cares about the story, so we're not going to pretend to have one, a la yeah. like the original Mega Man. Yeah. 
or or like the on original the, like Mario Diablo stuff like that. where it's like we're going to be really story centric as a big part of what drives the game it, it it kind of lands somewhere in between where a lot of it is gameplay driven but then there's all these elements that go into why you're doing what you're doing and they're all driven by this story that feels like it was written by like a you know, like first or second year college student who doesn't have real strong um, narrative storytelling skills. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff where either there's too much or not enough exposition and well, too and much I, or not enough information about the characters. I, I don't feel like I was connected to any of the, well, the characters. They in keep, it. One of the things that, you know, that definitely had a problem is they keep stopping you to tell you a story. They make you wait and stare yeah. at something. So they can give you that little story, and yeah, I can skip the scene. But then you're you're giving me the story yeah. that's kind of that, like like I said earlier, it's kind of a flat story. It's not really so much driving the game as a that's nice. Let me just go back and play. Yeah, it, it feels more like an interruption than an addition to yeah. the gameplay. When when we were playing it at PAX, I mean, me and Jordan when we, when I was playing it at PAX, I, I I really felt like the story was going to just be you know your standard kind of old Mario-esque story where it's like, okay, you're basically just given a goal and it's a, just a reason for you to get from level to level to level. Yeah. Like, I, I, I thought it was just going to be like, Go become the, the champion. The and it's like, that's your story. You're some dude who got summoned to this spirit realm. You fight your way through some guys and become champion. Like, that's what I thought the story right. was going to be. But now that we have it and we've played it a bit, it's like, as strong as it seems like it wants, to, the game is definitely very, very heavily built around the the gameplay, and we'll get to the gameplay at that point. But it seems like they just, like, threw all of this exposition in. Like, they tried to throw some exposition in from characters and throw in this story. But it's not very good. But it's not... It, it's like, they put enough into it that I feel like they wanted this to have some semblance of story. Yeah. Like, more than your Mega Mans and Marios of Nintendo days past. You know, instead of just a level grind or like in Gauntlet, like there's not like the loading the the story in Gauntlet is explained in the loading screen. So yeah, like, yeah. If any, like that's pretty much the only story. It's, you it's have something the beginning cutscene, and levels. then you have the loading screen. Go that forth, kind of find stuff. the boss, beat the boss, gain yeah. their power, move on. Yeah, that's Gauntlet, <laughs> and I really feel like this game almost would have been better served to just kind of ignore having all this exhibition because the exhibition is not good. Like, it's not very good. It's it's not necessarily, you know, you know, MST3K bad. Like, you know, it's not <laughs> yeah. necessarily, it's not necessarily, like, Geely bad, but... <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is <laughs> but it, it's it, not it felt, really it, good, and, but they, it feels like they are kind of still trying to force it on you, even though it's very bland and very kind of flat. It feels like they're kind maybe of Maybe the title is talking about the story. <laughs> 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 now we get it. It's all coming We finally clear. get it. After all this play, we finally have figured out what's going on here. It's a solid game Cause like, with in a the, story that's forced. In the second boss fight, there is like constant talking I, I think I between should get to slap your spirit you guy and the boss. <laughs> yeah, and a like, lot there's of all, There's constant talking, and I'm not going to lie, I paid attention to maybe 10% of it because we were in a boss fight. Yeah. Things got pretty hectic. and But it's like, why is this even... And But the parts that I did pay attention to... Watch out for the lasers, I mean, like, guys. These are, this is not that good. Like, this is... Why did you even include this? This is very kind of very... Yeah. Are at best. Okay, I think so writing an exposition. So at, at the risk of of spoilers, okay. So the well, the, well no, we're not going to spoil. We won't go. Okay, into okay, all right, okay. So I'll, 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 Kyle, did you have something? Well, I was just gonna say when when we're fighting the boss, he the your little spirit companion says stuff like, "I know all your moves. I taught them to you," and we're like. Huh? What? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, but that, that's kind of what I, what, I, what I was gonna say. I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it in a, in a less spoilersy kind of way. Um, it, it feels like there's uh, there's like this relationship with each individual boss that you go up against, but it feels like every one of them is kind of throwaway. It's not like each of them has their own special, unique thing where you fight them and then like, oh, now you maybe feel bad because there's some conflict that arises in them because of their former relationship. It's just kind of like. They made up stories for each of them, but as soon as they're gone, I feel like if we would have continued playing even further into it, that it wouldn't have been something that went back and they referenced, you know, yeah. stuff for or anything. I yeah. feel like it was just all kind of throwaway as like, well, why are we fighting this guy? Let's make up some reason. Yeah. 
And with the end of that, we will come to the gameplay section, which definitely in this game is is its I feel like it's its strongest selling point. Yeah, absolutely. As you can tell you can tell that this game is very uh very much focused on having really, really good solid gameplay. Uh Devin, we'll start with your thoughts on the gameplay. So definitely it's it's great. Um you know, I played a little bit by myself, uh, and you know, that didn't go so great. It's definitely a co op game. Um, you know, two people is decent. Three people is kind of really where it, 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 I think it would have its, you know, best. And four people might get a little too hectic at times, but is kind of still necessary. Um, but yeah, overall gameplay, I mean, I had a really fun time playing it. It, it all ran really well. It just, not really sure exactly what I want to say here. Uh, well, Ben, Timo, uh, yeah. what are your guys' thoughts here for them while, uh, Devin's thinking of okay. anything else um, he might have? I'll, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, <laughs> In terms of the gameplay, I felt like it was a really strong game. It really, like, I feel like it really got the concept of what it was trying to do. It was wasn't a game that was split between too many different focuses, and you know, well, we want to be a dungeon crawl, but also have first person shooter elements or yeah. di- different things. Like, I feel like they had just the right amount of RPG kind of elements to it, where it's like they they try and drive your interest by saying, hey, you know, okay, so if you beat, you know, more of these challenges, then you can get, you know, unlock some even uh, cooler moves for your characters that you have. And um, it kind of drives you in that direction of continuing. Um, and uh, and then the, the moves that you get, I feel like for the most part, are ones that make sense within the context of the gameplay. You don't get moves that, you know, that are either totally useless or totally overpowered it seems like from what we saw they're all useful within certain contexts and it seems like they did a decent amount of balancing on it so that you can't spam moves that are more powerful they have long cooldowns so that the move is awesome but you have to use it at the right moment because the cooldown is going to keep you from being able to use it again for a while if you you know if you're just hitting it too much and to uh to cover also uh, to help with this gameplay section to cover how what the game actually how the game is what the game how the gameplay actually works out is it kind of plays like a twin stick shooter you have your left stick which yes. moves if you're playing the controller you can play with the mouse and keyboard in which case it's a keyboard and mouse shooter but <laughs> for the for the term that i'm sure a lot of people will understand it is a twin stick style shooter uh, as much as it is very much a brawler um, it, your left stick is for your movement or your WASD keys, and then your right stick or your mouse aims you. And aim is important, not ju- I mean, not just for ranged abilities and the one ranged weapon, the bow, but also for your melee skills. Everything is very pinpoint precise. So if you're aiming the wrong way with a melee weapon, the only one that you might still hit with is the hammer, because the, the, there are four weapons in the game. There's a bow, which is you know, a ranged attack weapon, you can hold it down to charge up a shot to, you know, get a strong shot out. There's the, uh, I think they're like katars, the, like, fist blade weapons, um, which are about, you can basically just hold down the attack button, and you just attack really, really fast right in front of of you, and it's about just a lot of really quick, small hits. Uh, And then there's the hammer, which actually has uh, a, a slight AOE swing arc. It covers, I think, maybe about 145 degrees in front of you or something like that. Uh, it's not quite a full 180, uh, but it's it's decent enough. You can you can swing and clear a decent amount of guys, as Timo was doing on quite a few levels when he pumped some extra points. Into Here's one now from damage. the editors. <laughs> 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 I like how you say that. Like, there's somebody else who's going to be doing this magic editing. <laughs> it's not going to be me, it's so me, I, I can make uh, all kinds of comments uh, about that. <laughs> and its its main mechanic is that uh, when you swing with it, it kind of expends a charge, and for it to do its full damage again, you have to wait for a second and then swing again. Uh, you can still swing it in that amount of time, but much like the bow, it will do less damage if it's not fully charged. And then there's the shield, which you bash guys around with the shield, and um, it's very much kind of like the dagger in that a lot of the times you can more or less kind of hold the attack button. You don't really have to... It doesn't charge up or anything. No. Um, but its thing is that every couple of seconds it will actually build up a block, and you will block the next source of damage that comes at you. 
So um, you will still get knocked knocked back and everything, but it will it won't do any direct damage to your character. So here's kind of the, my thought on that. Each each player kind of has seems to have a specific role. You know, you've got you've got your range, and also each each weapon has a couple of different special abilities. That as with there are different special active abilities and passive abilities specific to each weapon. That as you complete more levels, you unlock access to more and more abilities. So you've got your range character, you've got your two melee characters who are also I wouldn't necessarily say exactly tanks, but you know they're they're the ones who want to be out in the middle of everything because they do a lot of damage. Yeah. The I I played as the shield guy. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was supposed to be support, but it didn't really do a great job of doing that either. I think um, a couple of its... It definitely has that move, the heal and movement speed aura. I feel yeah, like move, that should have been bigger. It, it should have been it really bigger feels like it's or not heal as faster as because it was. It heals me up fully, but it's like if somebody's not around me right from the start, it's not like I can mash it, run over to them, and revive them. It's like if they're... Outside, if they're just outside of the aura by you know a couple of radiuses, yeah. I get over to them and barely give them any 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 hit points back. Oh, yeah. So I kind of feel like that one still isn't quite balanced yet. I feel like if it's supposed to be support, they really need to focus on that and give moves that do that. Because as we continued playing, one of the moves I got later was this charge move that unless you end it on a character, which you can't decide that, yeah. all you can do is point where it's going, and it, it decides whether or not it's going to you know overshoot or undershoot or you're going to land in a wall. Um, <laughs> it was rather difficult to control. Um, I just felt like it's like I wasn't doing a ton of damage. Mostly I was just surviving. <laughs> the, the shield definitely seems like a very kind of tank slash supporty class. Yeah. But, uh, I, I will admit some of its more support-oriented stuff seems like it needs a little more yeah. to it. Yeah. And, like, when I say it surviving kind of thing, like... It can decently well. Yeah. But... because well, I have but um, one of the moves that, is you do encase said, yourself in ice. The hammer also has a little bit of tanking ability to it as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, the hammer deals out a lot of damage. I mean, hammer he, he was taking one swing at the guys that it took me three or four hits to take, and he would just take one swing at them, yeah. and boom, they're gone. The well, with the radius, you can clear, like, five of them at once. Yeah, yeah. so, you yeah. know... And like little weedy dudes. Some of your later you abilities, the meteor those. that you got, that yeah. cleared a lot of people at once and just seemed really unbalanced that you got something so powerful. And then here I had, you know, this attack that wasn't really that powerful, but I couldn't really heal that great. And then Ben could heal, but. Yeah, he and, Ben's, I, and Ben's heal was global, whereas yours was yeah, localized. Local. His and didn't yours do was as, very local. Yeah, mine was very local. And it, it sped me up, which was helpful in some cases where it was, you know, I managed to just barely dodge something. Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of clutch moments. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I, I wonder if, it didn't, if it's it really more like a, a late game kind of class, maybe where it might be that's possible. one where it gets some, when, some when really good got, moves when you've got real yeah, late game. a lot of crystals under your belt. Yeah. Uh, Maybe Tybo, kind of what are your uh, what are your thoughts on the any extra thoughts on the gameplay that you have? Something we haven't touched on yet is I enjoyed that before every level they give you the option to swap around all your powers yeah. with everybody. Before you're every level, with. there's a room you go to. You'll see it on the video where all the weapons are there for you to select from, so you can change things out. Yeah. Uh, if you want to trade rolls up. And it sounds like if you're playing online and you have more crystals than somebody else, like if you trade powers, you keep the number of unlocks you have. It's it, not it, Crystals, it seems like, the is weapon. your... Crystals are aligned to your profile. So, uh, yeah, it's not hooked... To, well, and that's the thing, too, is like if you're going through on single player and you beat nine levels using the shield, you have nine crystals if you don't get any of the extra challenges. Uh you have nine crystals to spend on any weapon, not just the shield. And that's, that is something that's very nice, I will agree. Yeah. And how the crystals work is every level, when you beat it, it can give you th- up to three crystals. You get one crystal for beating the level. There's always a timed crystal, so if you beat the level within a certain amount of time, you get a crystal. And if you beat, uh, there are specific challenges to each level that you usually don't know until you've already beaten the level once. Um, so after you've beaten the level once, if you didn't get the challenge, that's kind of an incentive to go back and play the level and do something special. Yeah. Um, and it, it of course makes the level harder, but you do get a crystal out of it. And yes, the, the more crystals you have, that's what unlocks all of your extra stuff. And yeah, we, I mean, we didn't get, 
you know, we didn't get full up, so we didn't see what, like, all of the late game abilities are, but it definitely seems like as you get further up the tree, you at least have, you know, the more options you have, the more versatile you are, kind of the better you're going to be. You yeah. Know? You don't lose anything by becoming more versatile in this game. You just get more access to more stuff so you can handle more situations better. And I like how the skill tree is kind of set up, you know, as you as you earn the crystals, you get active skills and you get passive skills. At first yeah. you only have one active and one passive slot to work with. But eventually you but unlock yeah, up to three. It, yeah, you get three of each. So the, the passive skills are something that's always there. For instance, as, as the shield guy, I had a passive skill that let the ice build up faster. You know, so it would it would block so, faster, and then uh, you know, when I had another one where if, when I successfully block something, it would do knockback damage. You know, so that was kind of nice. You know, it's, it's things you don't have to worry about. And then you have the active powers where it's it's uh, is on your left left trigger, left, uh, left tri- bumper, left, right bumper. Left, yeah, left trigger, left bumper. I assume right bumper. I'm assuming is gonna be, right bumper is the last one. Yeah. We didn't unlock the last one, but I'm assuming that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, actually, if I remember correctly from the controller setup, yeah, it's it's set yeah. to right bumper and right trigger. Of course, is your attack. Yeah, is your primary attack. So you know, set up set up for that made a lot of sense. You know, it wasn't terribly complicated. It wasn't going, oh, you leveled this up. Well, now pick from this, you know, this skill tree or this skill tree or this skill tree. It's here are your preset skills. Pick which one you like. Have fun. Yeah. And one thing uh, that that I uh, haven't touched on yet, too, is also, uh, I mean, outside of the fighting stuff, which is, you know, the, a large, large section of the game, it has it has kind of a light puzzle yeah. sort of aspect yeah. to it in your, in your Navi spirit, like we were talking about. Um, what it reminds me a lot of, and I actually mentioned this in game, is uh, the old, uh, the original Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube. How you had the yeah. chalice that was a that gave you the oh, area the that you could actually survive in, and if you wandered outside of it, you took damage. Um, there are some levels where that is the case. The the spirit definitely functions as a safe zone, but uh, in general, he's just kind of used as a light puzzle thing where there are shrines around that you. When you call you, because everybody, as we said earlier, can call the spirit, and he basically moves in a straight line from where he's at to wherever you called him to, or you can hold the call button to have him call to you and kind of follow you and come to you no matter what, and uh, that's used in various puzzle ways to like blow up shrines that spawn enemies, kill statues to complete quests. Uh, there's ones where there'll be huge acid kind of pumps in the center of the room and you have to move the spirit through it to kind of kill it back down otherwise it'll start filling the room with a poisonous gas yeah Um, it it definitely had a good blend between puzzle and action and definitely a couple parts where they were they were put together simultaneously they were puzzly but not uh, i mean a lot of the puzzles are basically ways to help you either kill enemies or live longer yeah uh there were there were a few that involved attaching the spirit to a block that could move around and you have to move this block around to get some switches but other than that pretty much all of the puzzles are, are are even though they are puzzles they're pretty much directly linked to the action like they're linked to your ability to live or do damage to the enemies Right, it's, yeah. you know, which was very nice because that's definitely, um, I'd say my my thing that I would definitely say about the gameplay is uh, that is extremely impressive to me is that the game is definitely about skill, like the yeah. combat, the the light puzzle mechanics. Like the combat is very much about skill. Like in the boss fight, one of the in the first boss fight, there's this point where. Um, one of the moves he does is this stomp that can knock you down. And, you know, if you get knocked down, you're not able to attack. You got to get back up. If there's enemies around you, of course, that's probably not going to be good for you. And the way that you actually stop it is that spoiler. <laughs> well, it explains it to you in the game. This is a I'm gameplay. just say gameplay spoilers don't count. Um, but the way that you stop it is you stand still, which is generally in that game usually means death. I mean, there, you don't really stand still and, like, face tank stuff very often. Uh, I think I stood still the most out of all of us, and that was because I was using the bow, and there were just moments where there was nobody around me, so I was staying in a good spot so I could pick guys off while you guys mm-hmm. were doing the, the, you know, the meat of the, the face tanking. 
But I will say the the game is very very much about skill, and that's I think it's very nice. It's got that going yeah. for it. Like there's not a lot in that game that's up to luck. Like it's well, it's about you being very good and very skillful. About, there uh, there were a few right puzzles where uh, and, yeah, picking the right abilities that not only work for kind of like yeah. the, but like your play style, like how you're choosing to play your particular weapon. Uh, the weapons I feel like definitely felt very distinct. Like even the, you know the, yeah, the, even the different melee the different melee weapons feel very distinct from each other. They have their own little quirks and 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 and, and you know pros and cons. And it's all about becoming skilled at the game. And I think that's very good. I think that it did that very well. One of the things I will say about because we talked about how uh, Devin mentioned that it's very much a co-op design game, and I I will say that. As far as the enemies are concerned, it does scale enemies based on how many players are in the game. Oh, right, and it scales nicely. Otherwise, I would get my ass. It <laughs> scales nicely, but I will say that the puzzles do not scale nicely, and no. there are definitely a lot of puzzles and a lot of the like different little action things you can do with your spirit, like like the poison mist generator is Ooh. way harder to do and kill on your own. It's a lot harder to take care how, of. When how fast you have does to that one around. cycle back when you're playing solo? It cycles as it cycles a little slower, but ha, you know, having played through the a couple of the I played through the first section by myself before we played this. Um, and yeah, I will definitely say that even in the very first few levels there are definitely puzzles. Uh, a lot of the puzzles are a lot easier if you have at least like one other person. Like just one other person can make a big difference in a lot of those those puzzly segments. No, yeah, even if like the enemies scale down, I I feel like that game's designed to be played with friends. Oh, unless yeah. you're oh, yeah. like super enemy to yeah. dungeon crawlers, and you really just want to like well, because I really crystals feel like to get all the unlocks. I really feel like there isn't one weapon that's like oh my gosh, it's overpowered by itself. Like, a lot of the weapons have a very clear, like, downside to them and, you know, just one weapon by itself. There are certainly some weapons, like, I will I will say that in single player, I think the bow is definitely the hardest weapon. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Especially when you get swarmed. But even with that, I will say that it doesn't seem like any of the weapons are perfect for single player. Yeah. So, like I say, you know, it's it definitely, you need two people. Yeah. I, if, you, I, if you're it's trying to play it by yourself, game. if you're gonna, if you're, you're gonna, gonna get have it, a hard it's time. definitely a game to play with friends. And as I said earlier, it, I would def, I would definitely say it's a game to play with friends, not necessarily just with other people, because yeah, communication yeah. can be very key. Yeah, there was a lot of times when, when it we comes would... to spirit control, like yeah. when where the spirit is to make well, sure because the spirit everybody gets controls where it needs the same one. Yeah, yeah, just coordinating is really important. Sometimes. Coordination is very key, so it's definitely a game to play with your friends. I, I mean, you might be lucky and you might get a pug that can do fairly decent, but uh, it's. It's not necessarily a game you just want to be run, jumping into with any random person out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's so one that thing said. Oh, there's, a, there's one other thing that I wanted to touch on too, which is um, related to the gameplay, and uh, and that is the difficulty scale. It really feels like this game was made for as soon as you Very are able to go up. back and get the crystals that you didn't get the first time because yeah. if you going back and doing if you the just time try and the time and the challenge crystals yeah if if you, if you don't go go back and re get crystals that you um, that you missed the first time uh, if you don't take advantage of the uh, the chance to get some replay value out of out of the game while you're still playing it um it feels like you're at a severe disadvantage. You're gonna have a um, bad time. You're gonna have the a bad the game time. quickly <laughs> becomes much, much more difficult than the the early it ramps stages. Up fairly quick. The early stages do it a does. good job of teaching you to play. There's some difficult parts, but for the most part, it's really not that bad. And mm -hmm. then after the first like group of levels that you play, the difficulty really scales up very quickly, and you have to start being able to think on your toes and. Um, Move around uh, quickly and uh, be able to identify and dispatch threats appropriately and coordinate with anybody on your team. And uh, there's there's just a lot of things all at once that start becoming really important to being able to do well at the gameplay. And I feel like one of the things that would make it a lot more approachable is to have more of those crystals. And I feel like if you don't have them, 
it's going to be much, much more difficult. And so the difficulty ramps up very quickly if you're not like continuing to try and beat the challenges. And maybe by beating more of those challenges, too, you improve your level of skill just at playing the game. Yeah, you know, practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, and, and, so, and so maybe it's, it's not as bad if you're doing that also. But I, that's, that's definitely something that you should be aware of is this is going to be a game that maybe is not really easy to play casually. If you're just going to sit down and play it with friends for, you know, 15 minutes here and there, you're not going to make much headway. And uh, it's going to take a lot of practice before you can really get very far into the game. All right. Uh, so I feel like we'll uh, we'll wrap up the review here. Uh, we'll start with Taimo. Get any final thoughts he has. Get a final kind of consensus from him. It, I would definitely, um, I would definitely pick it up. Don't pick it up to play by yourself unless you really, really are it aching does have, for a new gauntlet. It does have a four pack option on Steam where you can get it for the yeah. as Steam's pack for the options price of run. Three. You can get it for the price of three. So uh you know if you and you and two other friends even want to get it, you have one other person who might be interested. You know. Yeah, but. it's it's I would definitely give it a pick up. The story and the presentation for me not so much, but the gameplay is worth it. But it's I think it's only worth it if you're playing at least in a pair. Yeah. Possibly even four people. Devin? Um I definitely say it's a pickup. You know, I got it. I got it during the during this Christmas sale on Steam because one of my because uh, Meat was actually the one who was interested in it. I picked it up on sale. Definitely worth the price of what it was on sale. I'm not sure what its regular price 15 is. Fifteen bucks, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw that. That's that's worth. per. I think it was one yeah. of the. I I, I think I bought per. it because it came up as a. Um, I think as a community vote. Yeah, and it went to like seventy five percent. Yeah, off. it was on a it was on a, a couple of different sales over the over the yeah. So it's fifty. It, yeah. So when I bought it, it was like twenty bucks for the four pack. So definitely worth that. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I definitely say at 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 fifteen for one, it's it's a little steep. I think maybe maybe if it was ten, I think it would be pretty solid. But um, you know, is, is this is this an early access game still, no. or is it, is no, this, this it is, is done? Not an early access. Okay. This is an official relatively release. Relatively done. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, mean, I enjoyed it. I have some. I have some qualms about how the game sets up, but that's that's a different thing. <laughs> Benjamin Arthur. Um, I think that whether or not you should get it depends on uh, what you're looking for. If you're looking for a dungeon crawl, like Tom was saying, if you're looking, if you're if you're really itching for a uh, a new gauntlet fix, it, it may be exactly the kind of thing that you're looking for. It's uh, not very uh, art and presentation driven, but the art and presentation don't hold it back at all. The gameplay is very, very strong, and I feel like that kind of makes up for a story that feels like it was added, feeling like they had to have something. I feel like if it, it, because because of the main the main uh, attraction to it is in the gameplay. If it's the kind of gameplay that you're looking for and that you and your friends can do together, I would say it's definitely worth getting. If it's not, there's not a whole lot of other things to draw you in to make it worthwhile, probably. So, like I said, it depends on what you're looking for in a game to potentially buy. Yeah, I think for me, I definitely... I mean, even at even at 15 bucks, I'd say for me, it'd definitely be worth... Uh, but it, there is that caveat of uh, it's worth it if you know you're going to be able to play with people. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm a person. I love uh, co-op games, especially things that have like, kind of this. Even online, this game has a very kind of couch co-op-y feel to it. You know, like yeah, I, it, online you're still limited to the same screen and stuff like that. So it's got a very Magicka, Castle Crashers, those old couch beat 'em up sort of couch co-op feel to it. And I love games like that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say if you're looking for a good single-player game, this is definitely not your bag. This is a very rough single-player experience. I mean, it's a challenging multiplayer experience, but it's just a, a really, really hard and rough, kind of unfair single-player single experience. But yeah, definitely if it's if you're looking for some good co-op game to play with friends, it's definitely very solid. The gameplay is very spot on, which, you know, good on them. The, the gameplay is extremely spot on. The presentation, not bad. And, you know, the story kind of thrown in there, but it doesn't it, it doesn't really get in the way that much. It, it really the gameplay really does shine through almost any negative that could have that this game has. So, uh, yeah, I'd say for me, it's definitely a 
worthwhile pickup. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is our four-player review of Forced. Uh, check it out on Steam. It's out for $15 right now, or your regional, regional equivalent, 15 American dollars. Once again, I'll post the some of the develop the developer website information in the in the description. And on behalf of Pink Ringatame, I am Nasty Man, Benjamin Arthur, Timo, Spare Uncle Devin. And thank you for watching our four-player review of Force. We'll see you next time.